Hi everyone, I'm Hickey Park from Georgia Tech. I'm very excited to present Neurocartography, a visualization tool for scalable automatic visual summarization of concepts in deep neural networks. I'm presenting on behalf of my co-authors, Nilaksh, Rahul, Austin, Omar, Fred, and Polo. Deep neural networks have demonstrated remarkable success in many applications such as object detection, speech recognition, and data-driven healthcare. However, they are often considered unintelligible due to their complex structure and large number of parameters. To help practitioners and researchers more confidently and responsibly deploy machine learning models, there have been major effort and calls to enable greater model interpretability. We present neurocartography, an interactive system that scalably summarizes and visualizes concepts learned by deep neural networks. To interpret how a deep learning model works, neurocartography automatically discovers concepts represented by neural networks and finds which neurons can detect such concepts. Neurocartography groups the neurons based on semantic similarity of their concepts to provide better organized interpretation. Also, neurocartography shows the relationships between the concepts of the neuron groups to provide a global view of the concepts learned by the learning models. Let's get started with neurons and concepts. A common approach to interpret how a model operates internally is to study features detected by the model. A growing number of techniques aim to interpret such features at the neuron level because it's known that neurons are highly activated by specific features in an input, meaning that neurons can act as a detector of specific concept. For example, this neuron on the right detects dog face concept. Based on the concept, neurocartography clusters neurons so that neurons of similar concepts can be grouped together. Our neuron clustering approach has two phases. First, in the pre-processing stage, we cluster neurons quickly and efficiently without looking at neurons' activation maps in detail. Next, in the main clustering stage, we further divide the pre-processed neuron groups based on the degree of overlap in the neuron activation maps. The pre-processing stage aims to efficiently and quickly cluster neurons before comparing neurons' activation maps in detail. Our main idea is to group neurons if they are highly activated by many common images. For each neuron, we find a set of K images that highly activate the neuron. Then we compute similarity between the neurons by the similarity between the top image sets. Specifically, we measure chakra similarity between the sets. And we hash neurons into the same bucket if they have the high chakra similarity. To scalably group neurons, we use two techniques, mean hashing and locality sensitive hashing. Mean hashing efficiently approximates the jacquard similarity between two neurons' top image sets. Locality-sensitive hashing, LSH in short, efficiently hashes similar neurons in terms of the jacquard similarity into the same buckets with high probability. It is a popular technique to use mean hashing and LSH to efficiently estimate the jacquard similarity between two sets and find sets of similar items due to their scalability and theoretical guarantees on the accuracy of finding nearest neighbors. They avoid naively comparing all neuron pairs, resulting in a time complexity that is linear to the number of neurons. While the pre-processing stage offers an approach that is efficient for preliminary neuron grouping, the main clustering stage performs finer clustering based on the overlap of activation maps. In the pre-processing stage, for example, neurons for dog face and neurons for dog toy might be grouped together 
because those concepts may frequently co-occur in the same images. The main clustering stage further divides these neurons into different groups based on the concepts encoded in the activation map of neurons. Within a pre-processed group, we finally cluster neurons in the same group if highly activated part of the neurons activation maps overlap significantly. The main clustering also use mean hashing and locality sensitive hashing so that it can scalably hash neurons into the same buckets when the neurons activation map have many overlapped highly activated pixels. Neurocartography also shows the relationships between concepts of the neuron groups to provide a global view of the concepts learned by the learning models. To encode associations between concepts detected by neurons, we learn neuron embeddings that preserve the relatedness of such concepts, where neurons that detect more related concepts are located closer in the embedding space. Our main idea of neuron embedding is to learn vector representation of neurons based on their concept relatedness. Specifically, neurons that are frequently co-activated are learned to have similar vector representation in our neuron embedding approach. We efficiently sample co-activated neurons and avoid naively comparing all neuron pairs resulting in a time complexity that is linear to the number of neurons. We reduce the dimensions of the learned vector representations to 2D for visualization by using UMAP. To wrap up, neurocartography automatically discovers concepts represented by neural networks and finds which neurons can detect such concepts. Neurocartography groups the neurons based on semantic similarity of their concepts to provide better organized interpretation. And neurocartography shows the relationship between the concepts of the neurons and the groups to provide a global view of the concepts learned by the learning models. Neurocartography's multiple views implement such interpretation on the learning models. Graph view visualizes what concepts are detected by which clusters of neurons and how those clusters collaborate to form higher level concepts and the final prediction. In the canvas where people can zoom in, zoom out, and pan, graph view shows a subgraph of the entire neural network that is relevant for a class prediction. The circle nodes are neuron clusters or individual neurons within the same layers. The edges represent influence among the nodes. When people hover over a node, neurocartography displays the cluster pop-up, which contains example patches of the member neurons. Also, users can see how neurons interact to form a high-level concept through the connections among them. Besides displaying how detected concepts interact within two adjacent layers or given images of a class, GraphView visualizes how one concept can influence multiple other concepts across all layers and classes through a concept cascade. Users can enter the concept cascade mode by toggling the button in the header. Then, users can select neuron cluster node by clicking it and see a concept cascade that triggers high-level concepts across subsequent layers in the model. The neuron projection view and neuron neighbor view show a global overview of concepts represented by all neurons. In the neuron projection view, each neuron is represented as a rectangle. Hovering over a neuron shows representative example patches to explain such neurons' concepts. Users can focus on a neuron by clicking the corresponding rectangle.
As a result, neuron neighbor view displays neighbor neurons that are most related to the selected neuron. To validate the human interpretability of the clusters discovered for neurocartography, we conducted a large-scale human evaluation using Amazon Mechanical Turk. We had two questions to evaluate our neuron clustering approach. First, do neurons in the same cluster detect semantically similar concepts? Second, are the discovered concepts consistent for different people? To answer the first question of concept coherency of clusters, we conducted cluster cohesion study. For a group, we presented six neurons features and asked people to determine if there is a coherent cluster, and if so, to pick neurons that should be included in the cluster. In each group, we presented five neurons that are detected by neurocartography's cluster and one random neuron that we call intruder. Then we found true positives for the neurons that the user correctly selected, true negative for not selecting the intruder, and a false negative error for not selecting a neuron that is in the cluster. Based on these measures, we computed RC curve to estimate the quality of our neuron clustering approach. Both hand-picked and neurocartography-generated clusters performed well in overall, implying that the clusters generated are interpretable enough and have coherent meaning. To answer the second question about concept consistency for different people, we asked people to provide a short label if they think they find a cluster from the given neurons. We statistically compare how different users label the same clusters in order to see the consistency of the discovered concept. We calculated the average pairwise similarity between all labels in the same clusters by using a language model. Neurocartography and hand-picked generated groups show higher similarity scores than randomly generated groups showing our neuron clustering approach of semantic consistency between how users understand the clusters that they detect. To wrap up, neurocartography is an interactive system that scalably summarizes and visualizes fundamental concepts that contribute to the behaviors of large-scale image classifier models. We presented two scalable concept summarization techniques, neuron clustering groups neurons based on the semantic similarity of the concepts that neurons detect. And neuron embedding encodes the associations between related concepts based on how often they co-occur. Interactive exploration of concept cascade enables users to selectively initialize and examine how a concept detected by a neuron group would trigger higher level concepts across subsequent layers in a neural network. Thank you everyone for listening to this presentation. Neurocartography is open sourced and it's available at this link. I'll be happy to answer any questions.